Hi, Osas. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. How are you doing, Jamie? Good. Okay. So here we are together to talk a little bit about COVID and, and what happened the year we stayed at home. So <laughs> what were you doing at the time of the pandemic before the official lockdown? What was your life like? Well, um, I'm a student, you know, I told you this before. And so I'm a student at Edmonds College. So I was in school. I'm an international student. And so... I was in school and then we started hearing of this and I had classes. And so I was just like, what's happening? We started cutting down our classes, you know? And so we won't go to class. And thankfully, um, Edmonds is, has the hybrid system. And so, you know, so we were able to take some of our classes online. And so, um, we stayed at home and started working. And I think it was about the end of um, winter quarter. You know, we're just getting ready for spring. And so mm -hmm. that was about that time. You know, I was just going, it was cool because I'm school. <laughs> I'm actually school related, you know. And so that's just what was happening. And we just started hearing news and stuff. So that's it. And you, what were you doing? Well, I was working, have been working full time uh, downtown in Seattle, and um, we started hearing about the potential for people working from home, that it was going to be a, a broadcast uh, coming from the state's government that, that employers should start letting their employees work from home. And I was actually kind of looking forward to it because for a long time, I had wanted to have that uh, work from home alternative as, as a uh, alternative work schedule. And so, and last year, um, when we, my employer is involved in, in, continu in providing continuing education options and for a particular profession. And last year during snow times, we, uh, we had to cancel some of our live uh, programs. and. Um, we had to switch over to virtual format, which we already had. We, we already had the ability to do webcasts and webinars. So, um, but this, this was different because now this was not only staff working from home, but it was our particular team that had to go from a live uh, program format for many of our programs to a virtual format for everything since, since that March lockdown. So, yeah. So I, um, when Thursday afternoon, uh, I could just feel it coming. In fact, uh, our, our director said that a, an announcement was coming from the governor that day. So kind of all were waiting with bated breath as to what was going to happen. And um, I went home, it was like midday, like there had been an earthquake or a snowstorm. And I thought, <laughs> okay, I'm going. <laughs> and um, and uh, from that time forward, um, I, I've been able to work from home and um, it's, it's been an interesting experience for sure. So you were expecting it, yeah? You, you wanted something like this to happen. Right? I did, it, it was, um, it was a, a different experience to, to really want to see something change and then have it come about so dramatically. And I felt like that change wasn't going to happen unless it was a geographically wide change. And I had no way of predicting that this would happen. I, had, I didn't have any real inkling that, that this could happen. So um, I was surprised and yet um, it was a pleasant surprise in many ways. Yeah, really? So, so how, um, what were now the positive you know, effects? Because you're saying pleasant surprise. Why pleasant? I had been spending um, about two hours on the bus every day to commute to downtown for the last 10 years. And when I, wow. added, that, <laughs> when I added that time up, I realized I was spending almost 40 hours a month riding a bus. And if you put wow. that into perspective, that's about two full days, 24 seven, um, not doing nothing but riding a bus. And the thought for me when we started to stay home was, 
no more wear and tear on my body. Those buses were crowded. They were not always a pleasant experience, um, noisy, um, and um, just not a real fun thing to do. And uh, so taking that element out of the equation was, was really important because I knew I could start doing a little more self-care while still remaining very productive um, at my, in my home office. Do you have friends? Do you have friends? So do you see your friends now? Do you, you know, talk with them? So at the I, office, I mean, at your oh, office, yeah. Well, in the office, we have, co-workers office, oh, co-workers. Yeah. Um, mostly my, my, my work setting was a work relationship with everyone. So I didn't have like close friends that I couldn't see at the time, but we certainly carried on with our Zoom meetings and team meetings. And, um, and the sense of connection ran for a very long time. It, it, was, it was ironic to me to realize that when I saw my coworkers those first several weeks, I kept envisioning that they were in the office. I felt they were there and I was here. Um, <laughs> and, and it wasn't until it wasn't until a few months later that I started now thinking of them as being in their own homes as I was. Mm-hmm. But I, it, that was just a strange, strange um, phenomenon. Yeah. Um, Personally, for me, I kind of um, I missed school because um, I. I'm 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 the kind of person that likes to work with people, you know, mm-hmm. and so I I'm doing an assignment, for instance, and so you're like, no, don't do this, and then we laugh about it, and so <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so it was um, it was different when I had to do assignments, when I had to do classwork, and so not seeing my classmates, I think it. You know, it kind of made me not depressed, but I wasn't too happy about it. You know, mm-hmm. and so, yeah, I could reach out to them, I could talk with them, but it wasn't just the same having a classmate sit by you and you actually, you know, the lecturer says something and you ask, oh, what was that? And he says, okay, or she says she has, you know, she tells you a little bit more about what was said, or at the end of the day, you're asking each other about things and how we, I I, I missed it (laughs) personally, you know? I just, I missed the classroom environment. Mm -hmm. I missed at the end of the day, having to um, walk up to the lecturer like after an English class or something and have the lecturer explain to you something he has to, she said, you know? And so when we had to do it online, I had to send an email, you know, asking the same question when I could have simply walked up to you to ask the question, but well. <laughs> I can but, see you had a social connection there and, yeah. and, it, and it provided a sense of liveliness that I'm sure mm-hmm. you you know. I sure you did miss. Yeah, I um I my customer service um uh, uh, my customer the service that I provide for customers where I work is generally done by telephone and email. So that aspect didn't change when I came home, and I still yeah. had that interaction with our members with our mm-hmm. through email and through phone calls. So to me, that was that that helped keep the flow going. Um, what I did did realize was I, I did a mental shift pretty early on and, and I, I appreciate it because it feels like a survival skill that I didn't really have to find or figure out, it was there. But that was to call my friends and loved ones every week. You know, in fact, my goal for those first few weeks was to have one phone call a day. Oh, really? Do you yes. keep up with that? And I had a cousin in Iowa, a cousin in uh, in Phoenix. I had um, a sister in Portland, um, and and others, and then and friends in the in the area. And what I found when I called was they answered their phone right away, and they were <laughs> yeah. they were equally they were engaged. Yeah. 
yeah, and they showed care and concern. And right. it was beautiful because I felt that we were all, in a way, we were all in an uncertain time, but we were trying mm -hmm. to be there to hold each other up. Yeah, that was good. That's, you know, that was a good goal.